Kia everyone, Eloise Wallace here from Tide Africa Museum. And this is another film in my little series about some of the sites that relate to Gisborne's 20th century military history. Today I've come down to the Memorial Cross, or Wayside Cross, outside the Holy Trinity Church, down on the corner of Palmerston Road and Derby Street. This beautiful memorial behind me was unveiled on Armistice Day in 1920 and was designed by well-known English church architect, Frederick Eden. So first of all, I'd like to take a closer look at the cross itself. It's made of Sydney sandstone, and while the memorial was designed by Frederick Eden, the carving was done locally. The original cross on the top is no longer there, and it was replaced at some point with a much plainer style of cross. You can see the design of the first one in this early picture. It had the emblems of England, the rose, at the end of each cross piece and in a niche on the cross arm was a bronze figure of the crucified Christ. So at some point after the memorial's unveiling, the cross was replaced and the crucifix was removed as well. What does remain on the cross, however, is the bronze figure of Mary and Jesus, representing a mother and her soldier boy. These figures would have been moulded in wax, and then they were worked in bronze by an Italian sculptor in London and it was due to the difficulty of procuring bronze in London during the war that led on to a delay in actually getting the cross finished and up in New Zealand. On the western face of the memorial is an inscription to all the fallen of the Great War 1914-18. to Their names liveth forever. This phrase from the King James Bible was widely inscribed on war memorials during the First World War and was suggested originally by Rudyard Kipling. The full verse reads, Their bodies are buried in peace, but their name liveth forevermore. On the northern and southern faces of the memorial are inscribed the major campaigns in which New Zealand soldiers fought. Ypres, Sinai, Palestine, Jutland, Gallipoli, Messines, Somme, Passchendaele. And you can see they've included Jutland here, referring to the Battle of Jutland on May 1916, which included the battle cruiser HMS New Zealand. And on the other face of the memorial, it's inscribed, erected by the efforts of the Holy Trinity Girls Club, November 11th, 1920. So one of the lovely things about this memorial is that it does stand here due to the efforts of the Holy Trinity Girls Club. They spearheaded the project and they led the fundraising efforts for the memorial, raising the about £350 needed for the project. They held markets, held performances and all sorts of things. And we have a picture in the Gisborne Photo News here of the club at a reunion in 1960 and they mentioned that the Memorial Cross had been one of their major projects. The club had started back in 1916 and Miss Ellen Davies was the president of the club at the time the War Memorial Project was underway and actually unveiled the memorial. So now I'd like to tell you a little bit more about the designer, uh, Frederick Charles Eden. Uh, he was born in 1864 and he died on the 15th of July 1944. As I said, he was an English church architect and he was based in London. And he was very well known for his work designing churches, refurbishing churches, and from 1910 or thereabouts he focused on church fittings and stained glass. He was also the honorary architect and secretary of the Wayside Cross Society in England. And there are drawings by Eden held in the collection of the Victorian Albert Museum in London. Reverend Pack was interviewed for the paper at the time and he described the concept for a wayside cross. He said, There is desire everywhere for memorials of those who have freely laid their lives down for their country. The idea of such a cross is to those who pass along the highways of the great sacrifice and of those who in their degree have followed its steps. A wayside cross very simply is a cross that's placed by a footpath or a road or at an intersection and they often serve as waymarks for walkers or pilgrims or designate dangerous places. So the idea of the memorial cross here was just to seek to remind passers-by at this spot of the 500 men from the district who had died during the war. The cross was unveiled at 1pm on 11th of November 1920, Armistice Day, and the paper describes the event in some detail. The church grounds were occupied by representatives of all of the local bodies, Members of the Holy Trinity Girls Club were there, all dressed in white. The thoroughfares in the vicinity of the church were all closed and they were filled with people and children watched assembled in the schoolyard opposite. The cross was unveiled by Miss Eileen Davies, President of the Girls Club. The city band provided the music and as the floral tributes were laid at its foot, the band played Chopin's Funeral March. 
The girls' club, 50 strong, all dressed in white, carried an enormous cross made of scarlet geraniums up to the memorial. The closing hymn, Abide With Me, was sung. It was followed by the sounding of the last post in the national anthem. The paper wrote that people were weeping, the passers-by all burying their heads. While I'm here, I'd just like to touch briefly on the Holy Trinity Church, which was consecrated on May 18, 1913. In 1932, the earthquake completely shattered a large stained glass rose window on the Derby Street face. You can see it in this film footage shot by Max Fry, and you can see the memorial cross in this footage as well. The memorial cross was also damaged during the 2007 earthquake. While I'm down here at the Memorial Cross, I'd also like to tell you a little bit more about the interesting Second World War connection that relates to the building that's now CGM Motorcycles just across the road. So it was here during the early years of the Second World War, and as the new army hall that I talked about in my first video hadn't been built yet, that men gathered and were bussed out of the district. At that time, it was known as City Hall. The hall itself was large and had originally been built as Scottish Hall in 1913. It was converted to City Hall in 1923 and then converted to the Wise's Ice Cream Factory in 1945 before being converted again to the building as we see it today. So that brings me to the end of this little film about the Holy Trinity Memorial Cross and the building opposite. And while this memorial was rather outshone by the larger memorial down on the Esplanade that was unveiled in 1923, it's continued through the years in the 20th century to be a focal point for Armistice Day commemorations in the city.